Hello? Hello? Are there any lawyers working for Google watching this video? Any HR folks? If so, I promise you nothing I'm about to talk about is related to Google. Nothing. Zero. Promise you. I don't want to get fired from my job like this guy did. So, uh, so we good? We good? Yeah? I won't even mention the word Google. I'm so scared. Would a top tier tech company really hire a scrub like you? Like you? Like you? Let's be honest. No. Do you really think you're the top 1% of the top 1% in the world? Forget about it. But hey, let's be real here. Neither am I. In fact, every single top tier tech company rejected me multiple times. Google rejected me 10 times in a row. But you know what? On try number 11, someone made a mistake and I got a job offer. And if you listen to everything I'm about to tell you, well, someone might make a mistake on you too. These are the secrets I've learned about interviewing at top tier tech companies after getting rejected by them over and over and over again so you don't have to. Tip number one. It's impossible to cram for the interview, so gear up for the long haul. Your preparation for the interview begins today, whether you have an open application or not. See, the tech interview is specifically designed so you cannot study for it. The last thing a great company like Apple wants to do is hire someone simply because they nailed the interview because they googled the questions the night before and memorized all the answers. This person could be toxic 99% of the time, and Apple simply can't take the risk on that. A good interview cannot be studied for, and you best believe these top tier tech companies have the best interview programs in the world. So the only way to study for them is through experience. You must have already put yourself in situations where you're solving the most challenging problems on the job. Problems that take months if not years to solve. Because that's the experience you're going to draw on when you answer these tough questions during the interview. So practically speaking, how can you put yourself in these situations today so you can be ready for the job interview down the road? The short answer is do everything at work 2% better every day and multiply that by many days and you will get your opportunities. The long answer, watch this video, I'll link to it in the description below. Tip number two, do not ignore the non-technical part of the interview. Now I'm not saying the technical part isn't important. There are entire books written on the subject, but I see people fail the non-technical part just as frequently. Pop quiz, what are the attributes that your dream company grades you on during an interview? guarantee that 99% of people do not know the answer to that. But don't feel bad, because now you know what to do. Every company has specific criteria they grade each candidate on. You know, this is what big companies do. You know, HR team's got to do something with their time. And uh, this information is all public information provided by the companies themselves. So go look it up, write it down, and post it on your bathroom mirror. About half these attributes are completely non-technical, and they're also heavily weighted. And this is just like real life, you know? The most technical person in the room is not always the most influential. There are so many soft skills that go into determining your effectiveness on the job. And you need to make darn sure that you can prove during an interview that you have these skills. Let's take an example. Netflix. Fantastic company. If I get fired for making this video, that's the first place I'm applying to. Now look right here on their jobs website. Integrity. Do you actually have integrity? More importantly, can you prove you have integrity during an interview? These are the things you need to start preparing for right now so you can build your body of evidence. Which brings me to tip number three. I want you to memorize three examples for each of these attributes so you can bring them up during the interview. Now first, you gotta actually have three examples. Now I want you to memorize them so you can pull them out of your pocket at a moment's notice. Thank you for joining this interview here at Amazon. As you may know, customer obsession is a very important trait we look for in all our employees. Can you give me an example of how you're customer obsessed? This guy clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. I like that. Like that? <laughs> but you will be prepared because you're going to have your examples memorized in advance. And even if the interviewer doesn't specifically ask you for them, I want you to share them anyways. Pick the best example based on your read of the current situation. Tip number four, communication. Now, I know this is a broad term that gets thrown around a lot, so I just want you to remember two simple things. Thank you, miss, for applying for this senior engineering position. Your resume really looks stellar. Now, can you tell me how you'd reverse a linked list? Silence for long periods of time is not good. <laughs> a simple tip. Remember to think out loud, even if your thoughts are leading you towards a solution that you know is obviously bad. You know, it reminds me of when my wife gets mad at me. Sometimes she won't talk to me for hours at a time. And you know, that's just the most painful thing in the world. 
You know, it's just like, say something to me. Give me something to work with. The second thing I want you to remember about communication is that if you're applying to an American company, for example, and English isn't your first language, you know, that's okay. In fact, that's great. Just know that improving your English can often be the most significant thing you can do to improve your chances. So practice as much as you can. Final tip for you, don't give up, hang in there. Did getting rejected by hurt my pride? Yes. Did I think of a hundred legitimate reasons why I should not reapply as I was getting rejected over and over and over again? Yes. Do I regret the process? Hell no. Having been on both sides of the equation now, you know my mindset is completely different than it was when I was younger. I expect failure now. And I know it's not over when I fail because you either pass or you learn. And each time I get better and better and eventually I'll fail so many times that it'll be impossible for me not to succeed. I hope you can embrace this philosophy too, especially you younger folks, because you never know what you could have achieved had you not given up too early. That's all I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and I'd be happy to give you more. Cheers, and to all you tech dreamers out there, your preparation begins today.